I never can understand why men have to spit on things to make them shine. Now, if I did that to my saucepan... Shouldn't fancy me food if you did. Any letter from the war office this morning? No. Only a couple of circulars. Anyone would think they didn't want the general. Perhaps they don't. War's been on two months. Perhaps they think he's an old has been. You say that again and I'll... You men, you stick together. You and your general. I believe you'd follow the old boy to hell. Now, my dear, I'd get there first to tidy it up for him. <laughs> <laughs> Got my tunic, Bates? Yes, sir. Half all right this morning, sir. Cold enough? What was it? Fifty-five, sir. You didn't get a shot this morning, sir. Oh, not even a rabbit to be seen. Some fool's been walking in the woods again. Nowadays, people seem to think they have a right to trespass. Ugh. Oh, it's a better fit than it was two months ago, Bates. Still a couple of pounds to take off. Won't be difficult, sir, when you're on the active list again. No, no. Anything from the war office? No, sir. Not this morning, sir. Preposterous! Yes, sir. What an institution. Haven't the common decency to reply to my letters with anything more than your application is receiving our attention? Anyone to think they didn't want good soldiers? No, sir. What? Oh. Ah, no, that's better. You and I showed them in the last war, Bates. Yes, sir. We'll show them again in this. I'm not going to waste any more time hanging about. Pack my bag on your own and bring the car round immediately after breakfast. Yes, sir. Are we going to London, sir? To the war office. I'm going to interview Lord Aldershaw personally. <laughs> Good morning, Sir Quinton. Good morning, Sergeant. His Lordship's expecting you. Oh, thanks awfully. QMG. Do you mind filling in the form, please, sir? Thank you. I forgot your gas mask, sir. So I don't think I shall need it here, Bates. You really ought to have it, sir, in case. Oh. Well, now, don't you wait for me, Bates. You uh, take the day off. Just drop my bags at the club and uh, go to a theatre tonight. Always a good show at Daly's. But Daly's is a cinema now, sir. Hmm? Well, try the Alhambra. But, sir... I shan't want you till the morning. Eight o'clock at the club. Oh, very good, sir. Be kind enough to inform Lord Ottershaw that I am here. By appointment, sir? I scarcely think I need an appointment. Lord Ottershaw was my adjutant in the last war. General Mullins is with him now, sir. Oh. Well, I'll wait. Show General Judge number five waiting room. Yes, sir. This way, if you please, sir. There go. Lord Ottershaw's secretary. General Victor Church wishes to see his lordship. Yes, sir, I know. But the general said he would wait. Wait here, please, sir. Go. Victor. Well, five minutes ago, I thought you were in the country. Oh, I'm glad to see you, Andrew. Mm. I can't say you're looking very fit, though. Had about three hours sleep a night since the balloon went up. Oh. I see Podger Mullins is back on the active list. Oh, yes, he's directly under Lord Ottershaw. Oh, well, there's plenty to do. That's why I'm here, see Ottershaw. Well, Lord Ottershaw's a very busy man, Uncle. Naturally. I doubt if you'll be able to see you at all today, sir. 
So I've been told on four different occasions. Warming my backside on that infernal chair since noon. Well, it's much more comfortable to wait at home than the war office, Uncle. Go back, sir. Go back? Back to retirement? No soldier can be retired at a time like this. Certainly not a church. You make an appointment, Andrew, with Ottershaw for tomorrow. Any hour that suits him. His time's pretty fully mortgaged, sir. I've come to town to see him and I shall stay here until I do. Well, I've had instructions to say that your application... My application is receiving attention. That's not good enough, Andrew. Not good enough. I want something more definite than that. Oh, do go home, Uncle. You know, these things take time. Red tape... Red or... tape can be cut. You tell Ottershaw that I'm staying at the club. And I shall be here tomorrow and every day until I see him. Very good, sir. Uh, dine with me tonight, Andrew. Oh, I wish I could, sir, only I've got too much to do here. Oh, well, goodbye, Andrew. I shall see you here tomorrow. Right. Oh, Uncle. Huh? Is this yours? Ah, oh, General Church. Good evening, Dunn. Good evening, sir. Now, let me see. Uh, <coughs> this time, we're a modern army. Modern equipment? Modern ideas. I Under hope off. this will do, sir. Yeah. We are very full tonight. Uh, with your permission, gentlemen. Oh, By all means. We're just going, sir. We'll never make the mistakes they made in the last war. Take Gallipoli, for example. Oh. Oh. Now, the way those old doctors sir. must be landing yes. at Kew Beach. That old ass General Church. Uh, Malik Atorni, Pasha. Uh, wasn't he the he fellow who studied at Waterloo and believed in frontal attack? General Church believed in the bayonet. Cold steel began, sir. <laughs> <laughs> if he's still alive... Which I very much doubt. He'd probably think that air cover meant some kind of umbrella. <laughs> I tremble to think, sir, what will happen in this war if you can jest about the men who fought the last war for you. It'll probably be our saving grace that we can laugh and jest. It does show that we learn by other people's mistakes. A day may come, young man, when you may make your own mistakes. Sorry, sir, we were only ragging. No offense, man. But you must admit things have changed. Tactics have changed. The day of the foot slogger is past. Rubbish. British infantry have always won our wars. Look at uh, the peninsula. Look at uh, the Crimea. Look at... Uh... Ashendale, sir. Anyway, it's the man that counts, not the machine he drives. Yes. Evening, Briggs. Evening, Lord Arthur Major Church, Briggs. General Church in the dining room? Yes, my lord. I gave him your message. Very happy he was to be getting back on the active list. Wait for me here. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Lord Arthur Shaw. Want to speak to General Church? Where's he sitting? It was Church. I feel an absolute swine. The old boy only won the BC and the DSO. Ah, good to see you, Arthur Shaw. Sit down. I've only got five minutes. Oh, I'll relieve you a lot when I'm back. A uh, sherry? Yes. Uh, two dry sherries. The Amontillado, sir. The Amontillado. Yes. yes. I'm sorry you kept waiting today, Church. Oh, that's all right, my boy. It wasn't your fault. I should have made an appointment. A reversal of the situation, eh, Ottershaw? My adjutant in the last war, going to be my chief. Well, that comes of being out of things so long. Letting the grass grow under my feet. Out of things too long, Church. Oh, I... I don't expect an active command at my age. Now, I'm going to come straight to the point. Yes, yes, yes. You and I have always had a respect for the unadulterated truth. That's why I like serving under you. I always knew where I stood with you. And I'd like to know, Ottershaw, where I stand with you. I'm afraid there's nothing for you. Nothing for me. Is it my age? and other things. You see, when you retired, your methods were, well, old-fashioned. Didn't matter very much at that time. We were at peace. But we're at war now. Men of experience are needed. Yes, but not your kind of experience. Ardashaw, I was born and bred a soldier. It's in my blood. I can't be out of things at a time like this. I'm sorry. The decision's been made. I'm sorry, sir, but saddle of mutton is off. Shall I bring you... Uh... Anything you like. <coughs> well, I must be off. I'll, um, I'll see you to the door. Uh, your nephew's in the hall. I thought you might stop and uh, dine with you. That's very kind of you. 
Sorry to see he's become a brass hat. He's doing very well in the field. Oh, he's a very good athlete. No. He won't be half as good as you were. I had the training, sir. Uh -huh. You know, you and I had some narrow escapes. Remember that landing at Kew Beach? Why do we call off alive? Oh, good evening, Uncle. Good evening, Andrew. Stop and dine with your uncle. Thank you, sir. Uh, how's Marion? And my godson. They couldn't be better, sir. Young Victor's just walking. Oh, good, good, good. Well, good night, Church. Good night, Officer. Sure. I'll see you later. Oh, very good, sir. How's Bates these days, sir? Oh, just the same. Just the same. And the old Spaniel? No, I had to put her down. She's too old. Too old. Very nice of you to ask me to dinner, sir. You sure Otto Shaw can spare you? For a little while, sir. No, Andrew. Better get back to the war house. We can dine together some other time. Lots of my old pals here I can talk to. Well, if you're sure, sir. Oh, quite, 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 quite. Good night, Andrew. And uh, give my love to Marion. Good night, Uncle. Oh, and uh, remember me to Bates. Yes, I will. I will. I will. We owe you an apology, sir. What? All this, sorry, sir. We didn't know you were General Church. We'd never have said those things. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. See, we have no more Q beaches. What? <laughs> Good night. Good night, sir. Good night. Sir. Followed your advice and took in a show last night. Went to the Windmill Theatre, sir. You would know there was a war on there, sir. Suffering dreadful privations, sir. Why, there's hardly enough clothes to go around for the ladies, sir. Of course, I must go again one night to be quite certain of my facts, sir. Will you wear a uniform today, sir? No, but civilian clothes. Oh, very good, sir. Thought you might be going on duty right away, sir. No, oh, Bates, never again. I'm a civilian now. Well, there's no disgrace in that, sir. Lots of people are civilians. Because you're no longer wanted in the army, sir, you shouldn't deny your services elsewhere. With your experience, you would be invaluable to the civil defense. I want to offer my services in civilian defense work. Oh, you'd better see Mr. Smith. Oh, I'm afraid I can't use you, sir. There are no vacancies for wardens. No, for stretcher bearer or a demolition worker. We're using girls as ambulance drivers. You might try the food control people. No, on second thoughts, no. I promise I wouldn't push anyone else off onto them. I, I thought perhaps my experience of organization... Uh, yes, army general used to handling men and all that sort of thing. I know, the mayor. Biggest muddle I've ever seen. You need someone to organize the whole business. You have a big job on your hands, Mr. Mayor. England has a big job on our hands. I should like to help. Oh, very kind, very patriotic. Mm. Oh, well, there must be something you could do, even at your age. Yes, we will certainly find a way to use your services to every advantage. I knew I could help. Uh, take uh, General Church to Mrs. Farnsworth. She'll find you something to do. Thank you. Hello? I wish to be of service to you, madam. General Church, but how kind. 
Do you know, I think it's simply marvellous the way you elderly people are rallying round trying to do your bit. Colonel, what is you? I mean, he simply gave me no peace till I found something for him to do. So now he's helping to fit civilian gas masks, two till four every afternoon. <laughs> of course, the dear old thing's so earthly good at the job. Everything he does has to be done all over again, but he's so thrilled to think he's helping. Madam, Colonel Fortescue is all of 83. Yes, that's what makes it all so wonderful. You dear, gallant old souls just bent on doing your bit. It ought to be an inspiration to the rest of us. So you think I'm a dear, gallant old soul? Oh, I do. People like you and Colonel Fortescue, I think, are marvellous. So gallant. Good day, madam. Just outside, sir. Only a step from here. The dame, uh... Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Dear gallant old soul. Dear gallant old soul. is a special announcement. Volunteers are urgently required for work in ARP services throughout the country. All men and women under 65 are eligible. There is room for everybody. Volunteers should apply at once to their local town hall. Turn that off. They are specially yes. needed for... Take that away. Pot your money. Sir? Take them away. But you haven't even a time to glance at it. Take them out of my sight. And the wireless. But you want to hear the war news. I shall not. Take the wireless away. Tell the news agent not to deliver any more papers. Not even punch, sir. You wouldn't want to be without your punch, sir. I don't want to see it again. The Bates? Yes, sir. From now on, I'm at home to no one. You understand? No one at all. But, sir, you can't shut yourself Why not? like this. If you're in for dinner, sir, Mrs. Bates has ordered chops. Shan't want any dinner. Is there anything else, sir? Yes. Leave me alone. What is the matter, Miles? The gate's locked, my lady. Locked? Nonsense. I know the General has not been seeing visitors for months. But why should it be locked? Oh, McNabb. Come here, you son of a penny pinching rice. Penny pinching, eh? I would remind you, my lady, that Andrew Carnegie was a Scotsman. Open the gate, McNabb. Let's lock it, and I have got the key. Then tell the General I am here. The General's away. He's in foreign parts. In foreign parts? Pass. You mean he's gone abroad? When did he go? I don't again. Speak English, man. man. I do not know. All I know is what I was dealt. Hector McNabb to see to me, I'm away. If anybody asks for me, tell him I'll not be back for a guy long while. He's still here, my lady. I heard he's in the village. I also heard he's in the I know something is wrong. If only I could speak to the General. Oh, I should have married him years ago. It would not been such fun being a widow. I was not where he'd ask you, my lady. McNabb, come here. If you will not let me in, give this letter to the General. He'll not read it. Tell him he must. Uh... Oh, 
No, if you'll excuse me, I'll get back to my work. I'm awfully busy today. I never did have much time for women. Well. Well. Something for you, sir. Listen to that clock, Rach. You hear what it's saying? Lovely tick-tock, tick-tock, sir. It's saying, dear gallant old soul. Dear gallant old soul. Over and over again. Stop the confounded thing, Bates. It'll run down by morning, sir. You know I can't be bothered with letters. It's from Lady Frown, sir. Put it with the others. I'm so relieved you brought Dr. Sargent, my lady. Hope you didn't mind me phoning. No, Bates, you did quite right. Lady Frome tells me you've been very worried. What are the symptoms? For one thing, sir, although I don't think there's anything, well, physically wrong with him, he won't get out of bed. He hasn't for days. <laughs> Neither would I if I didn't have to. But, sir, he's had all the clock stopped. Well, is there anything very extraordinary about that? Well, sir, they talk to him. Oh, that's interesting. Very interesting. What did they say? Something like, uh, dear gallant old soul, my lady. Like when you're marching along the road with your regiment, all the books hitting the ground at the same time, in rhythm like. Mm. It is why it's not a lie. Oh, don't you go up, my lady. He's not himself <laughs> at all. I told you that he'd see nobody but me and Mr. and Mrs. Bates. He sees no one else? But both the maids have been called up, sir. No, no, I mean, um, outside people. No, sir. Uh, not since November 39, sir. Hmm. He, w he won't even go out for his morning walk, sir, in case he meets people. And he used to love a pot of the rabbit, sir, before breakfast. Yes, I heard something of the kind rumoured in the village, but it seemed too fantastic to believe. He doesn't know your ears, sir. I'm not sure how he'll take it. Oh, well, he can't mind a doctor. Tells me that you get out, sir. Get out. As for you, Bates, you fatal. I wanted you to admit no one. No one at all. Least of all. An infernal sawbones. There's only one thing more important to me than orders, and that's your well-being, sir. Damn it, Bates. Do I look like a man who wants to be poked in the ribs by a confounded leech? Of course not, of course not. I shan't disturb you more than necessary. As I am here, I may as well have a look at you. 
No use neglecting your health, you know. Now, if you just undo that pajama jacket, I'll have a look at you. Be good enough to leave my room, sir. Bates, take him out of here. But, sir... Do you hear me? Take him out. Now, look here, General. Get out, sir. Damn you, get out! Bates, when I give you an order, I expect it to be obeyed. Yes, sir. He wouldn't divert your feelings if he'd been himself, sir. <laughs> you can't hurt a doctor's feelings. We haven't got any. What has happened, Doctor? Can't you do anything for him? Nothing. His disease is purely mental. Occupation will be the only cure. Some, um, some interest must be found for him, whether he likes it or not. Get out of my house, sir! Get out! Bates! Show Lady Frome out! an idea. On your bath, sir? Yeah. 75, sir. I'll take it cold. Oh, very good, sir. Not a very nice day, sir. Oh, I don't know. Not bad for the time of year. Just caught a glimpse of a rabbit. Started me thinking. Must be a long time since I had a potted one. It is indeed, sir. I'd like to see if my eye is as good as it used to be. Must keep them down. Quite right, sir. Lay out the brown tweed in a pair of stout walking boots. And Bates. Yes, sir. Get my gun ready. I haven't used it for so long. It'll probably need cleaning. Oh, very good, sir. Back to breakfast, Pete. You really shouldn't go out, sir. It's very cold. I've been shooting in weather like this before. You've not been well, sir. Yeah, it'll do me good. You can't go, sir. You haven't got a dog anymore. Only after rabbits. You mustn't go, sir. You're not allowed to use a gun, sir. You need a special license in a war. I'm concerned there is no war.
devil are you doing here? Never saw a rabbit. Infernal poachers, I dare say. Shall I take the cap, sir? advisor. Today, I'm an official. So let me tell you this. In the first place, you're the most discourteous man I've ever met. Secondly, you're a selfish neurotic. And thirdly, six children are in need of a home. And whether you like it or not, and for your own good, you are going to supply it. That's all. Good morning, John. Alice, this is your doing. My doing, my dear Victor, how can you imagine such a thing? After your sweet letter and your reception yesterday. I won't have them here. Well, what are you going to do about it? Big pardon, sir, my lady. But a few children about the place, sir, might brighten it up like. I never thought of that. It might, you know. We could accommodate them quite easily, sir. By... Oh, excuse me. Alice, I am not running a home for unwashed brats. Wash them, Victor, wash them. Dans la salle de bain. So divine. Now, listen, children. You'll be good here, won't you? This is a very beautiful house. Says you. Ah, there you are. This is General Church, Helen. The children's new papa. How do you do? I'm afraid I've turned your bedrooms upside down, General, moving the beds and so on. Then you can go upstairs, madam. Put things back as you found them, take your children, and leave. Quite impossible. We thought, as you know, it's become a defense area since the Americans took over. The Americans? What are they doing here? Oh, didn't you know? The Americans are in the war now. We have to change billets for hundreds of children. I've only a lot of you, six. Only six? They're just what's needed to wake up the general. They're heaven sent. Oh, I doubt that. Very much. The big girl will give you an end. She'll feel mine across her behind if she tries to. She stinks of cheap pence. You'll receive an allowance of 13 shillings per week for the older children and 10 and 6 for the others. Goodbye. It is just like you, Victor, to give asylum to these poor children in your home. Asylum is the right word. Well, now I have some work to do. Victor, do let me help you. Not just with the children, I mean with yourself. I hate to see a man like you going to see. You want me to go? Oi. 
You? I ain't gonna stay in this house and you can't make me. So I'm giving it to you straight, see? If you try and stop me, I'll make you sorry for it, understand? As far as I'm concerned, you can leave at once. Okay. Well, you have somewhere to go, of course. Oh, sure I have, and I'm rolling in dough, too. Hmm. Hero, eh? Now then, my lad, out you go. Your coat, sir. What? Oh. Oh, hello. I want a pound of pork sausages. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and four pounds of bullseye. <laughs> no, bullseye! <laughs> and four thousand pounds of cash. Oh, yes, and four thousand pounds of kibosh. Leave that telephone alone and take your hands off that wall. What is all this noise? I told him I wasn't going to stay, not me. Can I go and have a bun? No, I want to talk to you. Oh, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, look at that man. Now, there happens to be a war on. How? Oh, he's telling us there's a war on. And because there's a war on, you are in my house. We didn't ask to be sent here. Why, not you? We're very happy to have you, aren't we, sir? Uh, but uh, now you are here, you've got to behave yourself, see? When school starts... Oh, I'm not going to any school. What? Hey, the blasted place. I'm not going no more. If you play truant, there'll be trouble with the authorities. Oh, I'll worry about that when the trouble starts. What's your name? Sonora de la Fontaine. I could hurt Sonora Dilla. Shut up, you. My name's Curry Higgins, same as ours. I'm Violet Higgins and he's Bobby Higgins. And mm. dear Mum's gonna have another baby. Really? <clears throat> What's your name? What's that to you? Answer the question. Very dope. Where are you from? What bin? Parents? Where are your parents? Haven't got any. <gasps> he's got a dad who's got married again and she's gonna have a baby. You shut your trap. Mm. Well, uh, and you? I'm Irma Smith. Your parents? Dad's in the army and Mum's going to have another... That'll do. Mm. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, oh, what about you, Sally? Come on, now, speak up. What's your name? Tommy Watkins. You might as well call me Limpy. They all do. I don't mind. Parents? Yes. Mum's got half the writers. Bates, the place has got to be run like a camp, an army camp. Was you in the army? Yes. Was that you? Are these your medals? Yes. Worth a lot, I suppose. Their intrinsic value is, I should think, anything between 30 shillings and two pounds. Yeah, seen a lot of blokes with medals like that. Saw a bloke once with an old row of them, pushing a bear down the ice cream. He looked at me and said, I know what he said. What are you doing tonight? Shut up! Now, 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 Bates, 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 Bates. Now, come along, come along, come along. Off we go. Run along to Mrs. Off. Bates. Off it. Did you know my mum was going to have a baby? Too quid, eh? Bates, you must keep them under control. And tonight, before they go to bed, we're going to bath them. You understand? They're filthy. We, oui, sir. But you might catch a... Uh, I have. The fuss you make, anyone who thinks you never had a bath before. Huh. I have bath regular. Like Cleopatra in donkey's milk. Left of your lip, Carrie. It's your turn, Nick. It's large, but well clean. Now, mind you, scrub them well, Mrs. Bates. Stand no nonsense. But, sir, these are yours. I think I'll make sure mommy being round. Hello? Hello? She's starting early. The sooner you get that muck out of your mind, as well as off your face, the better. Now, come on, Bertie. I want the nice old maid to bow me. Now, come along, now. Oh, oh, I want the nice old maid to bow me. Ah! 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 Be quiet, boy. I don't want your charity pajamas. You'll do as you're told. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now listen to me, my boy. Ah, Come on. Ah, hey, Uncle Nick. Ah, 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 then knock it. I thought one of you was missing. Come on, Sonny. Did he? Did he undress you, Bobby? Not all. Come on. You ain't gonna touch 
That's me. What? I'll go off myself. Here, those for me. That's right, Sonny. Come along now, have your bath. You mind your own business. It is my business. Circumstances have made me a substitute for your father. Who the hell wants a father? Well, anyway, I'm... I'm responsible for you. Well, you won't be for long. Put that out! Put it out. What you want is discipline, my boy. just because he got hurt in a raid. We've all been in raids. Raid? Were those German planes? No, fortresses. Fortresses? Flying fortresses. Howard! <coughs> don't be frightened, don't be frightened. Get your clothes no. off. No. I can get myself clean. But you've got to get out of here. Let me be by myself, please. Oh, very well. Don't forget your ears. What did you say Leave to me? Leave me alone, that's what I said. All that muck on your face, a child of your age. Tell him decent. Oh, that's right. Walk right in. Right into the lady soul, Devane. Get that paint off your face. I... All right, then you win. There you are, Mrs. Bates. That's the way to handle them. No nonsense. Bates? Yes, sir. Ah, soon have them licked into shape. Discipline, that's what counts. Yes, sir. Been handling men all my life, from raw recruits to... Well? <laughs> Ch change me mind. You can have a bath after all. <laughs> Tar. <laughs> there you are, Bates. That boy was unmanageable half an hour ago. Look at him now. Going to take his bath without a murmur. Yes, sir. Seems almost too good to be true. Nonsense, Bates. It's discipline that counts. Make them respect you. Yes, sir. Do anything with them once you get their respect. <laughs> Hey, that's no good. Not nearly enough. The general's just had six children. What? I'm telling you. Don't be a fathead. Everything all right? Well, sir, Harry Dokes has scarped. Run away, sir. Oh. He won't get far. He hasn't any money. No, sir. He hasn't any actual money, sir, but he, he, he's taking your medal, sir. Will you take the bath warm, sir? No money. He'll go on foot. He'll make for the nearest town where he can sell the medals. Wait, Thorpe. Hmm. He'll expect the police to be called in. So we lie low till night, on the way to Waythorn. Where? Where? Butler Spinney. Harry Dokes! 
come this side and I'll bash your head in. Where's Bates? Sneaking up on me from behind, is he? Bates is at home. Put that stick down. I ain't kidding. I want my medals. I suppose you put the cops on me. No. Why do you want to run away? What's the matter, boy? You mind your own business. I think you'll be better off in your own home. That lot they care about me. When Dad came back from Sicily with his arm shot off, she told me to scarp her. Sicily? Are they fighting there? Be telling me next you never heard of Dunkirk. You're coming back with me. Like hell I am. I'm gonna join up. I'm handy with these. I wanna be a mechanic. I could drive a tank or pilot a plane. Not yet a while. But if you're really keen, I might arrange... Arrange what? I'll think of something. You'll think of something. Wait and see. Be a good boy. What am I, a kid believing in Santa Claus? You'll get your chance, I promise you that. How do I know you ain't stringing me along? I keep my promises. You'll be the first one I know that did. Come back and you'll see. Okay. Wonder if the General's found how he dealt yet. I hope he never finds him. Sorry, Jay, that's the stuff for kids' roughage. <laughs> Very well for you to talk. You won't need it yourself. Blow to smell good. They are. Well, it's all ready, Alf. Go and call them in. Now then, you kids, breakfast ready. Ain't got a bloater. I want cornflakes. What's this muck? Can't we have bloaters? When you finish your porridge. Porridge is good for you. Then why aren't you eating it? <laughs> Here. What's the matter with your eyes? Nothing. Nothing? The lids are all red and puffy. You've picked up something. I've got a cold. That's what you say. You little toad, if you dare tell. Her eyelashes weren't long enough to suit her. She wanted a set of those artificial ones they wear on the movie. But she hadn't enough money to buy them. So she cut off lots of her hair and tried to glue them on. You little Loris, I'll never forgive you as long as I live. Shut up! I live. want a blusher! We want blushers! We want Well, this will interest you. Applied Aerodynamics, 1910-1918. You You're anxious? Oh, sir. We're going to get your breakfast. 1910. Been strung along as usual. Oh. In regard to breakfast, sir, uh, they won't eat their porridge. Beastly stuff. It's good for them. You make them eat it, Bates. No, no nonsense. Easier said than done, sir. Hmm? But, uh, well, uh, they respect you, sir. And if, uh, if you was to come and talk to them. They respect you even more, sir. You'd eat a plate of porridge. No, I couldn't do that, Bates. Look at the stuff's enough for me. Very good, sir. Stop this noise at once. We want bloaters. By all means, after we've had our porridge. Mrs. Bates, I'll take a plate of your very excellent porridge.
Bear. Tell Bates to phone the doctor, Sergeant. Aye. And then... Yeah? Unlock those gates. What did you say, sir? I said unlock the gates. How well that, sir? You can set your mind at rest about the boy, General. Nothing broken. Ought he to be out so long, sir? Be around soon. Hit his head. I... Uh... I ought to be getting the children's dinner on, Doctor. Well, there's nothing else you can do. Thank you, Mrs. Bates. Very sensitive child. Full of inhibitions. He's been wanting to have a look at his leg for some time. Wouldn't let me near him. He might examine it now while he's unconscious. What they doing to them here and there? The man had a big black bag. He's a doctor, stupid. There's always a flat bag. That's what they bring the babies in. <laughs> you wait, you learn. I know they bring babies in black bags. No, they don't. They oh, don't they 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 now, let's go. Out in the car, the car the floor. And don't you go at each other anymore. It was an accident. Oh, no, it wasn't. You're a big bully. Come on, sir. Bully, bully, bully. Looks to me as if the job is never properly finished. You say he was hurt in a raid. So I gathered. Mm. Probably picked up some infection waiting to be dug out. Oh, sorry, I forgot you don't like being reminded about the war. I'd like to help him if I can. A competent surgeon. My put the thing right in a couple of operations. And then with massage and hydrotherapy, the leg should be sound. Can't say, though, without seeing x-rays. Job to get him to submit to any treatment. Mm, that's the least thing you've got to worry about. Can't operate on a child without the parent's permission. Sometimes it's a bit of a guess. They don't understand. I'm scared of the word operation. I've seen cases where children have died just because they... Ah, he's round all right. Rousey, the an injection. Give me one of these tonight. A couple of days worth. Thank you. I'll talk. Glad you're better. with me, son. You won't leave me, will you? Can't leave you for an instant. Frightened? No, you're not. 
Now listen to me, Limpy. Not frightened anymore. Not with you, Stan. I'll stay. Quite a nice day, sir. Morning, base. Hello. Hello, Sam. Have I got to have porridge? Not this morning, Sam. Look, poached egg. In London, I sir. know, I know. Well, I'm going there today. No. You'll never make it, sir. The train goes in under an hour. The Daimler isn't licensed, and you've got to get to the station. Well, isn't there an omnibus? You've never gone the bus, sir. Oh, tuck, tuck. Will you take your bath cold this morning, sir? No bath, base. Haven't time. <laughs> you didn't have a bath yesterday, sir. Well, I've had to change quite a few of my habits in the last few days. Can't say it's done you any harm, sir. All right. I'll get your things for London, sir. Is he going to London? Yes, Sonny, but he'll be back soon, probably tomorrow. He really truly come back. Oh, Bates. Yes, sir. You're a first-class mechanic, Bates. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, I want to buy some books for that boy, Harry Doakes, uh, machinery, you know. Books, sir? What you want is an engine, sir, for practical instruction. Well, we got one. Have we, sir? Where, sir? The Daimler. The Daimler, sir? Our car, sir? Oh, you can't be serious, sir. Well, you could teach Harry to uh, take it to pieces and uh, uh, put it together again. And put it together again. I see the pistons is in there. That's right, inside the cylinders. Motors is like women, you've got to understand them. Women. Now, motors being combustionable, they... Women. Me and Dad was all right until, until she came along. Ah, thought something was eating you. What's the trouble? Well, when Mum died, me and Dad, we was like this. Until, well, he went and got married again, and she thought I ought to be evacuated to the country. We was all right, the two of us. Dad promised there wouldn't be no one else, and I didn't want no stepmother. Ever thought as how your dad might have been lonely? General had a wife, hadn't he? Very happy they were. I left the house with the parents' permission to operate. Happy that I could help the lad, but saddened by what I'd seen. Because I realized that was the background of all my children. Going to my bank, I passed the church where I was married. Only the shell remained. But it was as if to say there's still something left. Make the most of it. The bank, I learned many things. I heard about France, Alice. My investments are now in Japanese hands. Oh, Victor, does that mean... Oh, I still got my pension. As an old friend, let me lend you. No, no. Thank you. All my own fault. Neglected everything. Curious. Now I'm nearly broke. I'm happier.
Come and see the children. But I thought you had forbidden me your house. Oh, I, I, what can I say, Alice? Won't you stay to dinner? <laughs> You'll be proposing to me next. You need have no fear of that, Alice. McNabb! Eh? Open the gates. Oh, boy. Open the gates. I told shut you I gates. wouldn't have them shut. Open them and shut them, just like a blooming concertina. Wait for me, Alice, will you? Um, I, I'll help you with the pony. All right, darling. Huh? The horse. Oh. <laughs> How do you do, Bates? Afternoon, my lad. Hello, Bates. Oh, glad you're back, sir. I'll go on to the house, sir. Uh, fix up about Limpy, sir. Yes. Good. Thanks for the car. I'm afraid you'll have to depend on books in future. I'm selling the Daimler. Sell our Daimler, sir? Broke, are you? Well, some expenses to meet. We cost you a bit, don't we? Sell our Daimler. Well, all right, if he's got to sell it, he's got to sell it, see? Now, don't you worry. I'll help you to put it together again. Good mechanic, me. Sell our day. Here they are, my lady. Come along. Limp is in bed, you know. Oh. Well, Mrs. Bates, they are a credit to you. Let me look. She washed our hair. And combed our heads with knit. Did she? How old are you? How old do you think? Seven hundred. <laughs> he doesn't believe in flattery, does he? <laughs> What's flattery? Don't be so ignorant. You don't know nothing. <laughs> do you know the meaning of the word? Flattery? Yes. That's what Snara's always after. Oh, she is. She's always wondering about the thing. That girl, my lady. Sonara, she calls herself. I'm worried about her. Is she so bad? She's boy crazy. And with that muck on her face, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, look, there's Sonara with a soldier. And he's kissing her. What's that? Sonara with a soldier. He's an American soldier. How do you know? Because he's got stripes upside down. Oh. <laughs> I see. Leave it to me. Thank you, Miss Say, boy, you don't half kiss. I got a million of them. I not. I made of iron, baby. You think I'd want you, kid, if you were? Let's go for a walk in the woods, Sonara. Gee, but you sure smell good. It's my favorite perfume. It's called Sweet Surrender. Well, that's okay by me. What about it, kid? Oh, okay. Look out, Marky. Hello? I don't think we have met. Won't you introduce us? Well, uh, uh, I must be getting along now, ma'am. Oh, but you must not go without first having a cup of tea or a drink. Well, thanks a lot, but... I insist. We want to know this little girl, friend. Little girl. Hm. Oh, Victor. Mm -hmm. I have invited this young man in for a drink. Oh, capital, capital. Oh, medical. I expect you find it very different over here. Why, sure, sir. I guess you're right. Fresh as a coffee, yeah? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Why coffee? Thank you. Hello. Well, well, well. You have made them look smart, Mrs. Bates. And did Lady Frome tell you she's going to buy you all new clothes? Oh, but Victor, it is not necessary. Certainly. Well, tomorrow I will take them into Waito. What you got for me? How do you know I have anything for you? Must be thank you. You, Sinara, I bought this eau de cologne. Oh, thanks. Very hard to get, I find. But it smells very fresh. Uh, 
Uh, tell Bates to bring tea into the study, will you, Mrs. Bates? Yes, sir. Will you be hostess for me, Alice? Of course. Uh, you'll excuse me. Sir. Sinara, hang up my coat. There's a good child. She looks quite grown up, doesn't she? How old do you think she is? Why, uh, 18, she told me, ma'am. <laughs> Knock three or four years off. Come on, Sinara. Won't you sit down? Oh, thanks, ma'am. I ain't no cripple. Cigarette? Thanks. No, you shouldn't smoke a kid your age. I pay some people to mind their own business. <coughs> <coughs> you think you're so much, don't you? <coughs> Excuse me, ma'am. <coughs> or would you prefer drinks, milady? Not for me, Bates. What about you? Oh, uh, I'll take tea, thank you, ma'am. Very good. We're playing it like it. And we both have babies. I'm not a big I'm too rich like a good night. I'll teach you to use my lips and cool. Now, baby, baby, you must be tired of There, it's all over. It's all over, it's all over, it's all over. Now, smile, smile there. Now, would you like me to tell you a story? Shall it be? Hmm? Tell us about the general when he was a little boy. About the general. Shall I? Yes, yes. Very well. Now, once upon a time, a baby was born and he was called Victor Charles Church. Was that him? Yes, that was him. Was he born in uniform? Uh, no, dear. He didn't get into uniform until some time later. Well, he had a beautiful mother, judging from her picture. It must have been very sad for the General when she died. He was only six years old when he attended her funeral. But his father was alive, and when the General grew up, he took him and put him in the army. As all his ancestors have been, you've seen their portraits on the stairs. You must have noticed, too, the General's son in Air Force uniform. He was a fine man, too. Ah, if he had lived. Oh, but I was quite a child when I first met the General. That was in France, during the last war. Oh, I liked him very, very much. I think he liked me, too. But, well, he was happily married. I was very young. Besides, the gentleman. Later, I married Lord Tom, and I came to live in England. I was very pretty then. Oh, yes, I was. I had lovely, fresh complexion. Everyone admired it. And I never touched it with anything except soap and water. But now it is different. I must cover up the wrinkles. I am 700. <laughs> 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 oh, my dear. To be young and fresh like you. I had no idea she was such a kid. She'll get older, you know. It was just... Well, 
Our squadron's going overseas any day now and wanted to get a bit of fun before I left. She was so made up, she certainly had me fooled and how. But you can trust me, ma'am. I'll not see her again. Don't you like her? Why, sure. I, I guess she's got something. Perhaps you could write to her when you go away. I don't think she's had much of a chance, you know. If she could write to a nice boy like you and get letters in return. Oh, I get it. It might take her mind off other guys who mightn't be so particular about her age. Quite. so much as grin, I'll, I'll throw something at you. Be your guest out to Nara. Glad I've met you, ma'am. Gee, I never knew you were so pretty. Could I have a photograph of you just as you are now? You could send it when you write. Who said I was going to write to you? But you'll answer my letters, won't you? Oh, Hank, are you really going to write to me? Will you send me a picture, too? In uniform. If you have my picture, you won't go with other guys while I'm away? Cross me out, no, to die. Okay. So, kid, let me see. Aren't you going to kiss me? Is that the best you can do? You grow up a bit first. <laughs> <laughs> Something ought to be done about that leg of yours. No. No. She's going to write to me. Who? Who do you think? Do you like me like this? Very pretty. Hank thought so. Hank. I couldn't stand it. All right, all right. We won't do anything you don't want. We must change for dinner. Lady Frome's dining. Hope you don't mind. Used to changing in here. May I play in the mouth organ? Oh, yes, yes. I bought it for you to use. It's a beauty. Shell splinters came out of there. Compound fracture as well. But you walk on it. You stand on it without holding on to nothing. Oh, yes, yes. I wonder where I put my tobacco. You put it over by the door. Would you fetch it for me, Limpy? Having me crutch in here. No, no I forgot. I'll get it for myself. Confounded nuisance being dependent on a crutch. Thought for a while I'd be in the same boat myself. But the, um, the surgeon who did this job was a wonder. You know, I can ride a horse, kick a football with this leg. Kick a football? Golly, I wish I could do that. Well, so you might. If we got that surgeon to do for you what he did for me. Say, doctor, fixed you up? The very same one. Mm -hmm. No. No. Scared of doctors. Well, supposing you are, wouldn't it be worth it to walk properly and be able to kick a football? Kick a football? No. No. It hurts. I know what it hurts. Well, supposing it would. His leg of mine hurt at the time. 
Nearly gave up before they finished. I didn't want to be a cripple all my life. You want to be a cripple all your life? Dr. Sargent said with two simple operations. Two operations? I couldn't understand them. I ain't as brave as you. I wasn't brave. I was in a blue funk. You were afraid? But you got all the medals. Well, most often you get medals for doing a job you're scared stiff of in the beginning. I'd like to walk properly again. You're sure to be the same doctor as did you? Well, I had a talk with him in London. Of course, he'd want to see um, x rays. Would I have to go to hospital? Yes, but uh, I'd come see you every day. Every day? Every day. You'll be with me when they. Yes, sir. I'll be in the blue, Frank. Of course you will, like I was. And you had all my medals. I wish I was brave enough to get a medal. Shall I fix it? Get down. Uh, Lady Frome will be getting fed up with me. Sorry to have kept you so long, Alice. Oh, Victor, you shouldn't have changed for me. Look, that's all I've done. Oh, it wasn't for you, Alice. Oh. I wanted Limpy to see that leg of mine. I've arranged with Harcourt Roberts to operate on him next week. Harcourt Roberts? He'll cost you a fortune. Oh, Brave little kid. Do it like a soldier. That boy deserves a medal. <laughs> Should give him one of yours. You've got plenty. Why not? Why not? Oh, I was joking. Oh, look what he's done for me. Until those children came, I was living in the past. No good to anyone. That's so. Now I've got a future. Their future. I'm going to teach them to look forward to something better. Idealistic nonsense. You will only make it harder for them if you spoil them now. They will never be content to go back to their slums. I hope not. I'll do my best to make sure that they never go back, willingly. Those hovels should be torn down and proper houses built, with light and space. All over the country, thousands of children have seen green fields and trees and wildflowers for the first time. It's not right they should go back to those slums. They're our world of tomorrow. And it's up to us to see that that world is made fit for them to live in. Yes. What about the drink, eh? Hmm? Oh, yes. Your glass of sherry. I'd love it. I've got to put my cellar up to auction. Oh, no. Mm. Bristol came. Mmm. I still have a few bottles left. Thank goodness. I'm not selling those. Thank you. To the future. The future that is in this, your house. I drink the same toast. To the children and the future, Alice. Harry? Sounds like one of those fortresses. Alice, telephone for the ambulance. Hello. Please keep Hello. the children. 
your good price for your Daimler. Businessman, me. He's written to me again and sent me his photo. Limpy, you remember I said I'd visit you every day? I never thought then I'd be in the nursing home with you. You said you'd be with me when they did it. Oh, but I didn't mean like this. Oh. Oh. What's the matter? It hurts. It hurts. If I could only straighten my Pillow. Oh. Shall I wait for sister? No, you mustn't. She's busy. Oh, it doesn't matter. I can bear it. Aren't you a lucky boy? Now then, try a few more steps. Oh, you tell him that. 
Come in. Two visitors, sister. Morning, sister. Good morning. Hi, sister. How are you? Uh, oh. How are you, sir? Good to see you, sir. He gave me this. Come on, back to bed. He's walked enough for the first time. He's been walking. <laughs> It's about limpy, isn't it, sir? Sir. Betty Uprichard is not in bud yet, sir, but thought this might be boring for you. Thank you, McNabb. It's a pleasure, sir. Uh, eh? What is it? <laughs> Hardly know how you don't stick it, sir. Well, sir, it's like this, sir. After you had been so brave, sir, the district have nominated you for the George Medal. It's the medal they give civilians, sir. <laughs> Sir. What in? Well, sir, it being the metal I give to civilians. In this war, Bates, it takes a damn good soldier to be a civilian. Oh, well, my dear, here we are. What is the matter, Victor? Torture, mother! <laughs> 